We're here at the Nanjing Youth Olympic Games and you're in the position of chef de mission for the Australian team. Um, obviously you attended three Olympics, Barcelona, Atlanta and Sydney and um, coming back here must be a very different experience for you. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between being here as the chef and as an athlete previously? Yes, it's really quite a different role. Uh, when I was an athlete, I was, uh, I was a lot more selfish, let's say, and very, very focused on my events. Um, coming back as chef, I suppose it's really, the main thing is it's really opened my eye to how much organisation goes into an Australian team. You know, we have so much support staff, we've got medical staff, HQ staff, media staff, and all the coaches, coaches and officials. So I suppose coming back in the role as a chef, that's the first thing I've noticed. But um, I've really enjoyed... It's probably the, I've really enjoyed being part of sport again. It's, you know, you get a real buzz competing, especially competing at an Olympic Games, and I've never really found that again since I've quit, my, quit swimming. So for me to come back into this role and to say, go and see the athletes warming up, um, watch them compete and then see them after their event, it's probably the closest I've been to competing again. So I've really enjoyed that aspect of it. Okay. It must um, bring back a lot of great memories from when you were an athlete yourself and a young athlete like these ones and aspiring to be an Olympian. And obviously, you went on to have huge success winning multiple medals at Olympics, including two gold medals. Um, what are some of the memories you have of being a junior athlete and I guess the things that you look back and think, you know what, I did these things really well and it had a big influence on my career and maybe some things that you would change or things that you did change through your career to, to improve your performance? Yes, um, I mean, so many thoughts go through my head when you ask that question, but for me, being in, at the Olympics and in a village atmosphere, I always loved that. Um, it was a real buzz. I made my first Olympics when I was 18, so I was close to the age of the, of the kids here on the team, and I was certainly a lot more distracted than what I was at later games. So. That's something I definitely would change and something that you learn from experience. For example, in Barcelona, my first Olympics, um, I caught a bus into the city with um, another swimmer, Samantha Riley, and we bought some bicycles at, at a department store <laughs> and we rode them home through the streets of Barcelona and then we rode them in the village and downstairs and things and that was crazy. I don't know why. I'd, you know, Looking back, you know, I don't know why I did that. Um, it wasn't really the most focused thing to do when you're aiming to an Olympic medal. Um, gradually I got more experience, but then my last Olympics um, in Sydney, I got extremely nervous, so I would also change that. I would, would have spoken to more people and sought out some support and some ways of maybe getting some more sleep. So every Olympics you learn things and um, it's, it's kind of difficult to perform at your best at an Olympics if you get distracted. So I suppose the main thing I learned early on was don't get distracted with too many things around the village and just focus on your routine and what you need to do for your result in your sport. Yep. Um, what about early coaching? When you were obviously coming through the ranks, you were, you, you've talked about having a couple of co coaches, including Scott Volkers. Yep. Um, what were some of the positive coaching influences that your coaches had um, over your um, as an athlete? Yep. Well, I had two coaches in my career. Um, my first one was the, Mr. Wakefield, who was um, the coach at the local pool, three kilometres from where I lived, and I was with him from when I was nine to when I was 21. So he probably had a very major influence, um, certainly about of how I carried myself around the pool deck, being a good sport, um, you know, just those basic kind of rules. Um, but also he was very good because he didn't overtrain me. Uh, he was very much into technique, quality, not quantity. And so I never, I never got sick of swimming. I mean, it's an easy sport to get sick of because it can be quite tedious, but he always made sure that he didn't overtrain us, which I think was a major thing that he did. And then when I was 21 to 27, I moved to Scott Volkers. And for me, he was perfect at that time because I needed a different kind of motivation and he just knew exactly the right things to say to me to motivate me in training. Um, for me, it's all about being motivated every single day in training that gets the results, not, you know, when you arrive at the competition, you know, you have all these psych ups and let's get motivated and let's do really well, but it pretty much counts for nothing if you haven't been motivated every single day in training and not left one training, um, not had one training day, you know, where you haven't given 100%. So for me, Scott Volkers was, was able to do that. He made um, training fun, so that if you came in the pool and you're a bit flat, he you know, did stupid things and things to make us laugh. And it was certainly, he really encouraged having a very happy, sort of light-hearted environment. 
but he also knew exactly the work that we had to do and we sort of, not he didn't make us do it, but he knew the right things to say to yeah. encourage us to do it. And you've talked about the importance of Scott in terms of the motivation and having a fun environment, and an environment where you, you want to train and you want to get better. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen a lot of other coaches both uh, this week in coaches in events here, but also over your years in, in swimming. Yeah. Um, what would your advice be to aspiring coaches who are working <laughs> with young athletes in, in all types of sports as to what the things that you see as are important traits to have a, as an elite junior coach? Uh, yeah, that's a really difficult answer. Um, I know it's, I could never be a coach, put it that way, because I don't have enough patience. And, you know, it's, a, it's not just writing the programs and giving the science of what you need to do. So much more is psychology around your sport. So it's really having an understanding of your athlete and what motivates them to, to do well, what motivates them to train hard. Um, as far as in a competition environment, um, my... Scott Volker, Scott especially, was very relaxed and never showed any nerves. And I think that's a really good trait for a elite, elite coach. Um, I haven't really noticed it here, but I have been to Olympics where you see some coaches who, who, who um, are nervous themselves. And I think when you're around nervous athletes, it's kind of good if, you're, if you don't look nervous, yeah. if you don't pass that on. So that's one good trait I can say it um, would be good to have at a competition level. But as far as training, yeah... I mean, you, I'd imagine it's difficult. You can't be their friend, but you've got to make it fun and you've got to make them do the work. And it's a real balancing act, I think, to be a good coach. I've had assistant coaches who are very, very good scientifically, but don't have the personality to, to get the performance out of you. So it's kind of a balancing act with that. Okay, great. And I guess the final question, um, like we've talked, there's a lot of young athletes here and aspiring young athletes around the world, what would be your one piece, if there was one piece of advice that you could give to a 16, 17 year old athlete, no matter what their sport is, in terms of what they need to be doing um, to <laughs> achieve their goals? And I know it's a difficult question to answer. What would be your advice to them? Yeah, that is a really difficult question. Um, firstly, believe in yourself. Believe that you can be the best in the world. Um, it took me so long to have the self-belief that I could be as good as anyone else. Um, and then obviously the, the working hard. And for me, it was all about doing the little things, you know, doing the little things each day. And the third one was always controlling the controllables. So just worry about what you can do. You can't control what other people do. Um, control what you can do in your own performance. They're the three things that I kind of worked on towards the end of my career. But the main thing to me it always comes down to is, as I've said previously, it's just the work that, that you put in every single day. And then when you get to an event, it's believing that that work, you know, will come out in your performance. Well, Susie O'Neill, <laughs> thanks very much for spending some time with us today. My Thank pleasure. You.